Yeah. Hi, Deepak. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so this is, I'd like to introduce you. <laughs> so this is uh, a live interview Q&A with Deepak Saini, um, owner of Fit Body Health. I know you're going undergoing a rebrand, which will be Deepak Saini Health and how you went from 270 to 160 pounds. So my name is Julie Anderson, this is Deepak, uh, and Deepak, thank you so much for being here. Let's dive in. Can you tell us your story? Sure, first I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think we had a few little technical difficulties, but uh, ready, to, ready to rock and roll here. So yeah, so my story is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give the short version and then I'll give you lots of time for questions. But uh, essentially, uh, I always was the chubby kid uh, growing up. I can't remember a time when I wasn't uh, overweight. Uh, you know, struggled with uh, you know getting bullied and teased, and and you know, and then when you you know get to uh, you know start to mature and you start to get interested in girls, and then you know they're not interested in you because you're you know overweight and that sort of thing and uh, and then I started playing uh football thought thought thinking that would help me with confidence and 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 stuff and it did it certainly did a lot of great life skills playing team sports for sure but in that process with really no guidance except being you know bigger is better in a four year period uh I put on uh so uh, when I started playing football at the beginning of uh, grade uh 8 I was, uh, I had to make weight at 170 pounds. So I, had to, I had to lose about seven pounds just to make weight uh, for that level. Uh, but then onwards in the next four years, I gained uh, over 100 pounds or about 100 pounds to 270 pounds uh, is what I sort of topped out as. And then over the years and, you know, go to university and start, you know, actually training and, and that sort of thing. And I got really, really strong. I started sort of training like a power lifter. I uh, got really strong, but I was still a kind of a big, fat guy essentially uh then i got in the workforce and you're sitting all the time and there's a lot of snacks and treats always in the in the office uh that sort of thing free pop and juice uh you know at the fridge and all that kind of stuff and uh so i was doing uh chronic uh cardio and that sort of thing and and you know that kind of didn't really move the dial much kind of still around 250 at that point and then my uh my wonderful wife and I decided, you know, we're going to go get married. We're going to have a destination wedding. So we decided we want to, you know, look good for our wedding photos. So we basically, the both of us for like six, seven months, basically just, you know, uh, you know, calorie restricted, starved ourselves. And yeah, did we lose some weight? Sure. Did our, you know, got our photos done and all that sort of thing at, at our, at our uh, destination wedding. And then, you know, within less than a year after that, all that weight came back. And then at some point, uh, yeah, about, yeah, maybe six, seven years ago, I, I decided to get into, you know, start running and, uh, you know, kind of did okay with that. Actually, you know, did, did, did pretty decent with that. Started with some five and 10 Ks and it was a half marathons. and was going, you know, uh, going on and on with that and trying to looking to do, you know, a full, full marathon and maybe do some triathlons and stuff like that in the future. Uh, so just pounding the pavement, weekend warrior, uh, you know, you know, 12K on Saturday, 14K on Sunday, and then, you know, kind of rest during the week and, you know, office job and then, you know, do the same thing the next weekend. And so did I lose some weight? Sure. I was doing like a ton of, uh, of uh, calorie burning through all this uh, chronic, chronic cardio, uh, as I say. Uh, so I kind of got what, uh, you know, some people call skinny fat. So my arms and legs got pretty lean, but I still had this, you know, midsection, big, big tire around my midsection. And then uh, one day, uh, you know, not to get into too much detail, make the story a little bit shorter, but basically one day I went to pick something up and, uh, you know, something really light, like five pounds, and just heard a little tweak in my back and my back was really sore. So I kind of rested for a week and then hit it the next week and then, oh, still kind of sore and then kind of rest for another week and then, you know, hit it again the, ne the next weekend at a, at a lesser pace. But that was my big mistake. Number one was just trying to work through the pain uh you know i couldn't i was in so much pain so i went to go see my doctor uh you know just a gp and you know in hindsight you know it was totally uh misdiagnosed and and that sort of thing eventually i went to go see a physiotherapist and a chiropractor and all this and nothing was really helping so finally i did start doing some research uh you know what could uh it was, no let me i take a step forward i finally got so fed up i just went and paid for an mri myself instead of waiting for the system just went and paid for an mri myself 
I uh, got properly diagnosed with degenerative disc disease in my L4, L5, L5, S1, which is basically lower back. And so once I knew what I was up against, uh, you know, physio, chiro, you know, while, while strengthening my core, which is important, uh, which had been, you know, lacking for many years, uh, you know, thinking that running was working my core, but that it really doesn't. Um, you know, they really couldn't do anything for me. So I started investigating, you know, what can I do to heal myself? Came across uh, PRP, platelet-rich plasma treatments. Uh, very quickly, basically, they take your own blood, spin in a centrifuge, take the platelets, uh, which are very uh, rich and concentrated, and then they inject it into the site, so right into my, uh, into my spine. Uh, low back is tricky, so they told me right up front it might take three or four sessions uh, before you see any improvement. So the whole time I'm just doing research and research uh, in between sessions. The sessions are about four to six weeks apart. Uh, it's kind of expensive, so I was trying to stretch it out to six weeks, every six weeks, uh, you know, out of my own pocket. And um, yeah, so then in between, I was just doing all this research, and then I came across, um, you know, some literature and some and some studies and 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 and, and you know, the science. So the next appointment, I went to to the doctor. I said, "Hey, you know, this is what I've been learning. Does this make any sense? Uh, you know, am I on the right track here?" basically what the literature is telling me is that if I eat, you know, foods that are low inflammatory, then when you, you know, do the injection, it'll work. Even though you're injecting at site, it'll work where it's supposed to work. It's not going to your knees or your gut or anywhere else that you might have inflammation. If you bring inflammation down primarily through diet is what I was asking, but you know, other factors as well. And he said, Oh yeah, that, that totally, no, you, you understand it correctly. So you must have read the expression on my face because I was about to be like, why the heck didn't you tell me to change my diet? And he said, and he must have, you know, I was about to yell at him and he, he realized, he's like, you know, quote, to be quite honest, most people will not change their lifestyle, uh, will not change their diet. I kind of sort of sort of forget to tell people. And I said, no, you don't understand. It's been, uh, it's been over a year I've been struggling with this, 18 months at this point, actually. Uh, I'm not golfing, which I used to like to do. I wasn't running, which was, had become sort of my thing. I couldn't pick up my daughter. My youngest daughter was like, you know, like one years old at that time. And she'd be like, you know, dad, dad, pick me up. And I couldn't even bend. I had no flexion. I couldn't bend over at the waist. I couldn't put on my socks. Hard time, you know, tying my shoes. All of a sudden I'm like, no, you don't understand. My life sucks. Uh, I'll do whatever. Now in hindsight, you know, I, I, I don't, I didn't at the time didn't see myself as being depressed. Now that I know a little bit more about depression and that, and that sort of thing, I probably was, um, but not, not, you know, trying to self-diagnose myself, you know, after the fact, but I probably was depressed with all the changes and limitations I had in my life. So basically I, I just went, you know, I thought, okay, I'm just going to eat clean and we can talk about clean means later. And in, in my regard, uh, for uh, a week after the procedure, uh, uh, so it was too late for that procedure when I asked them, but I ate really clean, uh, you know, like on a dime for the week after I thought, okay, I recovered maybe a little bit better, range of motion maybe a bit better, eh, kind of hard to tell. And then sort of after that week, sort of went back to normal. And then as I knew the next procedure was going to come up, so I started eating really, so I ate clean for a week leading up to that one and a week after. Not only did I recover from the procedure itself a little bit uh, faster, range of motion was a little bit uh, better again. So, hmm, okay. Then it dawned on me, like, why am I eating clean for a week before leading up to it a week after and then going back to old habits? I'm like, I'm just going to eat clean until I'm done with this or, you know, until we figure out what's next. So I ate clean, you know, basically. And so I ended up having to do a total of seven in a row. And I've done a couple of maintenance ones since, but seven in a row, again, spaced about six weeks apart. So I just ate clean for, you know, basically, you know, three, four months straight you know, I was feeling better, more energy, wasn't so achy. Uh, but the real, you know, uh, aha moment was when I went to, uh, you know, we had, you know, hadn't done the laundry and, and, you know, it was a little bit behind. So I go to grab a pants and, and worn in a while. And mind you, this whole time, you know, and for someone who struggled with their weight their whole life, I wasn't a jump on the scale all the time and check my weight all the time kind of guy. So I grab a pair of pants that, uh, you know, kind of weren't in the, in the, in the main rotation. I put them on and there, there's so much room. So I go to my wife, I'm like, these pants are really big. I, I, I think I might've lost some weight. She's like, oh yeah, no, you can totally see it in your face. And I was like, why, why the heck didn't you tell me? And she's like, can't you tell yourself? And I said, I guess just a mental thing. Uh, so I was like, no. So then I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump on the scale. And yeah, sure enough, I lost, uh, lost weight. 
Uh, so I, ke I kept, kept it up for, you know, until the treatments were done, another, another two months or so. But anyway, long story sh uh, short, the last 40 pounds of fat I lost in about six, seven months just by eating sort of clean, not doing any more exercise because, again, I couldn't really do anything. I could walk. I could walk and stuff, but I couldn't really do anything high intensity. I was scared of strength training because of my back. Uh, so if anything, you know, from when I pre-injury to where I was, you know, my exercise had actually gone down. Uh, you know, I probably actually had put on some weight when I wasn't being active while I was trying to figure out this injury. Um, but yeah, so I mean, degenerative disc disease, you can't reverse it. All you can do is not, uh, you know, try and do strategies so it doesn't get any worse. But yeah, so I basically got down to about 160. So, you know, so from 270, 160 was over quite a number of years, but that last uh, you know, 40, 50 pounds came very, very quickly and it was all fat. And I know it was the reason it was fat is because again, trying to really do my performance for running. Um, I was started doing some testing, uh, electrical, um, body impedance testing. So I knew what my lean muscle mass, my bone density, fat mass, you know, you know, water weight, you know, water mass, et cetera. I had done that before I got injured. So I right away went again and got it done again. So, you know, in that amount of shorter time, you know, at my age, I'm not losing, you know, lean muscle mass was the same. I'm not losing bone weight. I'm not losing, you know, blood weight and all, you know, you know, in, in like a, a year, 18 months or, you know, thereabouts, that's not happening. So really the only thing was fat. I lost all fat weight in that time just by changing diet. So then, uh, yeah, so that's kind of how that happened. Uh, just to, I'll maybe just take the story a little bit further. Uh, you know, over time, people are starting to, you know, notice some changes and, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm just, you know, you know, trying to heal my back. And most people that I work with are close, you know, friends and family kind of knew my struggles with my back. But, you know, you see people, you know, ex coworkers or, you know, people you hadn't seen in a while, you know, in maybe like a year, or two years or something like that. And I'd run into them, you know, on the street or at the mall or what have you. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And they didn't recognize me at first. And they were like, wow. are, you know, are you? Are you okay? Like you know, you said people thought I had cancer. I oh lost so much God. weight. People thought I had le leukemia or, or or something like that. I said, no, you don't understand. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Remember, you know, when when is a male at his peak? 18, 19, 20, 22 years old. That's when I was at my worst. I was at my sickest, not my heaviest. Uh, not to mention autoimmune conditions. So that's a whole other storyline of things I struggled in that regard. That essentially is almost essentially healed itself just by making changes in my diet. So basically what I call for myself, uh, we want, you know, uh, take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't think it's one thing particularly I call it low inflammatory. So I'm just a low inflammation guy. Uh, and that's, uh, what I practice. And then I have so many people asking me questions and questions and I'm informally helping coworkers and friends and giving them tips and sending them article links and et cetera. And after a while I was like, you know what, I'm spending all my time doing the research. I got so into it uh, that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, about two and a half years, not, not quite two and a half years ago, I decided, you know, I enjoy this more than, you know, what my, what I was doing, what my profession is. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to jump in and start a company, get certified uh, and, uh, and, and run with it. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's kind of my story. I mean, I know that was really brief, I'm happy to take any questions on, you know, some of the finer details, but that's how I kind of healed my back, uh, lost all the weight that I struggled with for, you know, my whole life or, you know, essentially for 30 plus years, uh, and, uh, and then started a new, uh, a new career path. That is absolutely amazing. And congratulations on that. And thank you so much for sharing that journey. I know a question like right away that everybody wants to know is what do you consider eating clean? What, what should people eat? So I know it's, you know, you'd said it's uh, you know, you take a little bit of this, you take a little bit of that, you call it a, um, like low inflammatory. I, I know this is like a big net, just casting it out there because everybody's different. But could you just share some of your insights and advice for people that, you know, I'm sure they ask you like, well, what do I do? Like it worked for you. What should I do? Sure. Sure. Um, so no matter how people eat or it, obviously, okay. For number one, it's very individualized, right? Okay. You know, there's a genetic component and you can certainly get tested. I've done all sorts of food sensitivities and that sort of thing. My, you know, got my 23 and me done, uh, that sort of thing. You know, there's going to be sort of an ethnicity component to it as well, besides a social and, and, you know, sort of, um, cultural uh, component as well. That being said, 
very simple things. You know, two biggest things are inflammatory. And I, and, and, you know, depending on who you listen to, and even in my own mind, it flips back and forth, which is the worst and which is the second worst and it goes back and forth. But the two biggest, uh, sugar, refined sugars, and inflammatory uh, oils, highly processed vegetable oils. So people think they're doing a good thing by eating canola oil or so soy oil or what have you. They're so heavily processed, uh, they're not natural, right? Uh, you know, canola, you know, you have to, you know, if you go out in the field and grab canola and you rub your hand and rub with your hands, you don't get oily, your fingers don't get oily, right? It's gonna be so heavily processed. Grab an avocado on the other hand, cut it open and hold the avocado flesh in your hand and your hands are greasy, right? That's a, that's a natural oil. So, so again, to, to answer your question in, in kind of a high level, sugars, inflammatory uh, uh, oils, and then some, a lot of people don't do well with, uh, with gluten. Um, so, you know, that, so I kind of shy away from grains in general myself personally, but that's hard for a lot of people. So it's just making better choices uh, with your grains if you're going to do it. And a lot of people have a problem with dairy as well. Uh, you know, uh, not to get too scientific or too down, uh, uh, down a rabbit hole, but you know, uh, cows as an example are bred with, um, you know, the A1 protein, which m many people, myself included, cannot digest, um, wow. you know, Heritage uh, cows, which are far and few between, have A2 protein, which are a little more easier to digest. So uh, dairy can be a problem for a lot of people. Or, or for my clients, try and steer them. If, if they have problems with that, you know, try uh, goat's milk, uh, sheep's milk. Uh, again, A1 protein. Um, you know, think about it. You know, a sheep or a goat is a lot closer in a, to size to a human than a cow is, right? A cow is like, you know, four or five times the size of a human. So you got to think all the molecules and, and chemicals in, in cow's milk is not compatible with, with, with a human, right? It's meant for baby cows, not, not adult humans, right? So, so yeah, those are the, the trigger legumes. A lot of people have problem with, uh, with legumes and, and, and that sort of thing. So I, I, I know I do, so I, I tend to shy away from that. But when I work with people individually, we, you know, just got to see what works, works for them. But, you know, definitely reduce sugar. And, you know, there's very, very simple things. And I don't know if we're going to get to that today. Uh, you know, those simple little things that people can do. But yeah, sugars, inflammatory oils, uh, gluten, a lot of grains, uh, legumes, dairy, kind of the big five from, from a food perspective. Of course, there's a lot of inflammation and stress that comes from our environment and stuff. And that's a whole other topic. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, it did. That's really that's really useful because I know a lot of people really are into leg legumes. I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> legumes, legumes or whatever. And it's like a lot of people, I know for me, I can't eat them either. It's just awful. It's just so, I just get so gassy. My belly sticks out like I'm pregnant. I can't do it. I know. Yeah. So, so gas is, you know, a lot of people think, oh, that's just part of beans. Well, yeah, it's part of beans when your body can't handle it. If your body can handle it. You don't get gas or upset stomach from it. So your body's giving you a, a response, right? That's, that's not compatible with you. Same with dairy. Uh, you know, like I said, goat cheese, I can handle, I don't do milk or anything like that. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, um, you know, and, and I, I know it's going to happen to me, but you know, sometimes you're in a rush, you got family commitments, you're rushing around between kids activities, what have you, you know, oh, let's just grab a pizza. It's just easy, easier, or, or even a, you know, might you know, a frozen one, throw it in the oven you know, whatever, you know, so, okay, there's going to be cheese on it. Right. So, you know, going in, it's going to have, at least I do, it's going to have an effect on you and sure I pay the price the next day, but I have it. Right. But otherwise right. I, I, I avoid the, uh, you know, those, uh, type, type of, uh, things. I avoid, uh, legumes, uh, beans, uh, just cause I know how it makes my body feel. And if I have too much, uh, you know, a while back, uh, this might be maybe a year and a half ago, you know, probiotics and how to get more, you know, healthy, bacteria to, you know, fuel, uh, you know, fuel your gut and everything. So I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll try kefir. You know, I never tried it before. A lot of people talk about it. So I got kefir, which is basically a fermented milk, a lot of, you know, probiotics in it. So I, I tried it and I, you know, nice big glass and like, I didn't really care for the taste, but whatever, but just having that much of a, it's still a milk product. I was, I middle of the night I got up and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I'm running to the bathroom, but it's, nothing's going on there. It was just so much bloating from oh, like, yeah. you know, my body just was not used to it anymore. And it was such a you know, strong response. So everyone's got to, you know, just see what works for them. And when I do work uh, with my clients, the first, one of the first things I do 
as far as the nutrition piece is actually have them do like a, a two week log. Uh, I know some programs like you got to log everything and, you know, macros and all that. Like that's not me. I just want a two high level two weeks just so I know what's a typical, um, you know, week or two week period for a person. So I can find the easy, quick things to either modify or eliminate or change that people start to see really quick uh, gains off of very m minor things. Right. So that's uh that's kind of kind of yeah i'm probably going off on a tangent a bit there but. no this is fascinating i'm i'm I, I love the way this is going because it's so helpful because it sounds like you know you take a really holistic approach when you're dealing with your clients and like an individual like looking at the whole thing like you mentioned the environment just all these other pieces and i thought it's neat that you go after like the low-hanging fruit right away like when you take a look at it, it's like okay well what can we address right now yeah, my approach is, I mean, I've seen it all out there. I, you know, I tried a lot of this stuff back, you know, back in the day when I was overweight and, 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 you know, I, I was obese, you know, for how tall I am, you know, I'm, I'm under six feet at 270, you know, to however you want to figure it out. I was obese, right? I tried a lot of, a lot of uh, the programs and the, this diet and the, that diet and what have you. And, you know, so, you know, if you, if, and, and so many people just think calories in, calories out, calorie restriction, uh, you know, our bodies are amazing pieces of machinery and, you know, you can certainly lose a ton of weight, uh, by just starving yourself, uh, in a, in a, in very quickly, but that's one, that's not healthy and two, it's not sustainable. So again, so I take a holistic approach, trying to make people, it's all about behavior and lifestyle change, right? I could take all this stuff away. And then when I'm done working with a person after, you know, four months, they're, you know, if they haven't fixed up here and, and made, you know, ingrained, new ingrained habits, they're just going to go back to how they were. So I find very small changes, you know, a couple, you know, one, one or two the first day, and then maybe another one later in that first week, or then another one the second week, minor things are slowly, slowly, slowly changing. Um, and then, and then, you know, they get sort of work on the nutrition, you know, there's also the mindset and motivation piece. That's a whole nother thing that has to be worked on at the same time. Of course, there's exercise, you know, movement in general is just healthy for, for healthy aging and, and that sort of thing. And, and for, uh, you know, keeping lean muscle mass as you age, nobody wants sarcopenia. That's, a, that's the loss of uh, muscle mass as you age. So I do incorporate exercise and movement and functional uh, fitness uh, as well. I don't think a lot of people have to go kill it at the gym. I mean, if you want to do it, that's fine. If you want to train for, you know, the CrossFit games or you want to do a marathon or triathlon or climb Mount Everest, yes, you have to train for these things. But if you just want to live normally and age gracefully, you know, you don't have to do a ton. So it's very, I take a very minimalist uh, approach, Minim, minimal effective dose uh, for exercise is kind of my philosophy. And then, like I said, again, not to go down a rabbit hole, there's all the other stressors. Sleep is huge for not only your hormones and, and, and your weight loss uh, and longevity. Uh, and then there's all the other environmental factors, you know, chemicals that our people are ingesting don't even know uh, you know, in their products and that sort of thing, you know, uh, uh, wireless and Wi-Fi, that's becoming more and more in devices, uh, blue light, uh, uh, it's probably not coming off on the screen, but these are blue light blocking glasses because I'm looking at a computer and when I do a lot, a lot of the day. So I wear blue light blocking glasses pretty much all the time. Uh, I have a blue light, I have blue light glasses, uh, too. I just don't have them on right now, but I, yeah, I wear so. them too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, you know, not to go on a tangent on blue light blocking glasses, but you know, I was doing a lot of research on this and, uh, you know, a lot of them are, you know, the red glasses. you've seen, uh, you know, Bono at, you know, at all these things, he's got the orange glasses and people, stuff like that. I was like, yeah, but a lot of them, they're not, you can't find, it's hard to find prescription, right? I have prescription uh, lenses. So I went to go talk to this probably about two years ago and I went to go see my eye doctor, regular scheduled, you know, appointment. And I said, Hey, you know, this is, you know, am I crazy here? You know? all these studies saying, you know, all this, we're getting all this extra artificial light and, you know, increases of macular de degeneration there, are, you know, studies are showing they expect the population macular generation, just like, you know, hockey stick curve up, you know, as we go into the future, you know, is it, you know, you're an eye doctor, you know, and, and my eye doctor is relatively young. So she's, you know, kind of on the cutting edge. She's not like super old school. You know, she didn't do her schooling like 40 years ago type of thing. And she said, no, 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 that's totally true. She's like, uh, and she wears contacts. She's like, well, as soon as I get home, I throw my blue light block glasses on. My husband has them. Pretty soon we found out every single person that works at where I go to my, the eye doctor and then the, the front of the store where they sell the glasses, every single person that works there at some point in the day is wearing blue light and blocking, blue light blocking glasses. So if the wow. people who are in the industry are doing that, what does that tell you? I'm like, why aren't you, 
promoting this is like, well, that's a little, you know, it's extra and, you know, and people don't want to spend the extra. I'm like, well, how much extra is it if I get regular frames with my prescription, blue light blocking? It's like, that's eh, like 50 bucks more. I'm like 50 bucks to not have that's macular degeneration. <laughs> years now? Yeah, sign me up. I'll get them. So anyway, that's, yeah, it, I guess I'm going off on a tangent, but long story short, short, it's everything. All the stressors in our lives have to be addressed. Nutrition has to be addressed. Nutrition is the big piece for me, number one. But mindset and motivation, uh, you know, why, why do you, you know, what's someone's reason for wanting to be healthy? Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds, you know, you know, why? You know, it's like, well, you know, it's my girlfriend's wedding. I was like, well, what, why do you want to lose for your wedding? Well, you know, she's so successful, you know, well, why do you think you're not successful? Well, you know, you know, you peel the layers on your back to you finding it back. And it's like, well, my mom always compared me to this friend that I had. And she, you know, whatever. And it's like, it's something rooted in their childhood or some trauma, uh, whether it be physical trauma or, or you know, a me mental, you know, uh, I don't know, that's not necessarily mental abuse, but some mental thing. And, you know, that's why people get stuck and why they think they want to lose 10 pounds. But it's like, that's not your problem. That's a symptom. Your problem is something else. Now, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, uh, a doctor or anything like that. Uh, I don't pretend to play one on, on the internet, but, you know, if you got to at least identify those things and what's your root cause and get your true purpose or your true reason, then everything's going to come along. If you're just like, I just want to go to this wedding or I'm going on a vacation and you know, I want to lose 10 pounds really quick. Well, you know, you can do it. Like I said, you can starve yourself. Great. But we're not aligned, uh, you know, energy wise in that sense. I want to help people be healthier and live a long life. Cause that's my goal. So. Right. Yeah. You know what? I think that's so interesting. I just, uh, in this training I did, there's the seven questions where you just keep asking why. And when you get to the seventh, why it's, that's it, yeah. which is what you just said. It's like, you're just doing that already. It's like, well, why I want to lose 10 pounds. Well, why do you want to lose 10 pounds? Cause I'm going on vacation. Why are you, you know, and then it drills down to that root. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. I don't have a track of the time and I want to make sure I touch on a couple of other things. Do you know sure. how much time sure. we have? Uh, I have no idea. I've lost track of time. Okay. So as, what I'm going to do, as you can I, tell my, my <laughs> wrists are bare, my watch actually broke on the weekend and I haven't had a chance to get to the store to get a, a new, I don't have an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was a volunteering building a, a playground, uh, uh, no, sorry, not building. I was tearing the old playground down so that the, they could put up the new one. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, I was carrying a big timber with another couple guys and I just flexed my wrist and my just broke. Oh, geez. It smashed to the ground. So I was like, okay, whatever. Anyway, oh, no, I think we got, I think we got a little bit of time. So yeah, just jump okay. in. Yeah. Um, I would really like it if you could share a tip of, um, or a piece of advice, whatever comes to you about that mindset, because it's such, it's like right up there with that nutritional changes, anything that, you know, that maybe is a common theme that you deal with, like all the time with people, something that you could uh, give them. I mean, I know you did already say that about the why, but do you have another piece of advice or tip for people? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of techniques to get to that with people and uh, we won't have time to get into that now, but you know, I'll just reiterate, I hope I'm not saying the same thing, but really have to identify why people want, you know, I've had clients who are grandparents and, you know, some are just newly retired or, you know, they're still working, um, you know, but, you know, they, they have, they see their grandkids and it's like, you know, I had one client just recently um, and his, his grandkids are quite a bit, are, are very young for, for his, for his age. Um, and he worked quite a long time. He had his own business. So he worked in the business so much past the regular retirement age. Uh, and, you know, finally sold the business He's you know, financially free and all that sort of thing. But his, his grandkids are like, uh, uh, seven and four. I'm like, do you want to be here for their high school graduation? Maybe see their wedding. Like you're talking like 18 years out and where you're at right now. Like, I don't know if you're going to make five years, you know, you got to make the person. It's not for me to judge. I'm just give information, but he has to identify it or they, or they, you know, the person has to identify in themselves. What is really meaningful to them? What is their goal? You know, and even if someone's really maybe superficial and it's like, well, I want to make $10 million. I want to become partner at my firm or whatever. Like, great. That's awesome. But if you're dead, what is it going to matter? or you have cancer or something, right? You got to take care of your health, right? You know, when you don't, when you, when someone doesn't have their health, the only wish that they have is to have their health, right? They don't wish for the $10 million. Oh, I have 10 million in the bank. I wish I had 11. If you don't have your health, the only thing you care about is your health. 
no one can argue that. If you're in a hospital bed, the only thing you wish is you had another day, another week, you were not in the hospital. So to get people to realize that in themselves, and I'm not trying to be super drastic, mm-hmm. and it's maybe not always that extreme, but what is it that you are looking forward to? I want to spend time with my wife when I retire. Great, but if you're physically unable to travel, what are you, what's the point saving for it now? What are you doing? You know, a lot of people think, oh, eating organic. And I'm not saying people have to eat more organic, but this and that or your coaching program or this product or buying a treadmill or whatever. And I don't have the time. It's like, when are you going to have the time? You got a time when you're in the box, six feet under. Yeah, that's for sure. But anyway, so I don't know. I'm kind of I'm jumping around here a bit, but and maybe that wasn't a coherent answer. But really, it was. people have to understand themselves. If they're not going to do it and don't have that thing, then me, Jenny Craig, which is bullshit anyway, but blah, 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 uh, you know, whatever, those type of programs, no one's going to help. People have to want it themselves, right? They have to teach their low point, not necessarily their low point, but really understand it. For me, it was a low point, right? I wasn't doing the things. I couldn't pick up my daughter. I probably was, even though I didn't recognize the time, I was probably really depressed. I was at my low point. I decided to make the change to make my back healthy. To me, just get my back healthy was, you know, what was going to let me pick up my daughter and, you know, move forward. The byproduct of trying to get my back healthy was losing all the weight that I struggled with for all those years. Once I come through the other side, it's just like, wow, I feel amazing. I have energy. I'm not getting as sick as much. You know, all those things. And you're like, you then only at that point you realize, well, what's next? So, you know, my goal now is to live to be over 100, to be a centenarian plus, right? So all the decisions I make every day, and sometimes I make you know, like that pizza, like I mentioned earlier, I make that conscious decision. This is not helping me for my long-term goal, but I'm making the decision right now to either eat with the family or, you know, eat in a timely manner or what have you, whatever it may be. But I, otherwise, I, every decision I make every day, you know, when I get up, when I go to bed, you know, sometimes I stay up late. Like I want to watch the movie with my wife and spend time with my wife, you know, and, and bonding and having social interaction is a part of longevity for sure. Um, so that, that plays a part, but, you know, staying up, you know, an hour past my bedtime, that's hurting my longevity, you know, 60 years from now, you know, and, and, you know, no one gets cancer or Alzheimer's or diabetes or whatever overnight. It's, it's, it's 10 or 20 or whatever of decisions of, of chemical reactions in your body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that leads up to the, the one big thing, right? So I'm trying to make, I've made the conscious decision and that's not necessarily for everyone. I've made the conscious decision. I have this longevity goal. So everything I do, uh, or, you know, I try with that, keep that in mind, whether it be, and mitigating the risks, you know, wearing the blue light blocking gases, driving a big vehicle so that if I'm in an accident, I will survive the accident. Uh, you know, even though it's not good for, for gas and that sort of thing. Um, you know, always wearing a helmet, you know, when I ride my bike, you know, not only setting an example for my kids, but you know, like if I fall, you know, I don't want to get a stroke because I hit my head, you know, mm-hmm. falling when I very easily could have been wearing a helmet, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, there's things like that. So yeah, th- this is, this is awesome. It's so refreshing to talk to you because it's just so good. It's like, it's, it's off of, um, what a lot of people I think suspect and it's not the mainstream where it's like you hear the same crap over and over and over again. And so it's so refreshing to hear all this stuff. You mentioned sure. about that, your goal about being a centenarian and then also about Alzheimer's. And I know that you do some nonprofit work with Alzheimer's. Sure. Yeah. Let me just one more point. Let me say one thing, Brian. Sure. I'll get back to the Alzheimer's for sure. 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 That is something I'm passionate about. You know, in this day and age of, you know, Instagram and Facebook and likes and Twitter and how many followers I have and this, and you can get everything on demand, um, that sort of thing. Um, sorry, my little one's just coming in. Honey, I'm still doing my, uh, my call here. Okay, why, don't you, why don't you come in and say hello to everyone? Hi. Okay. Okay, I'll be wrapped up pretty soon. This is uh, Julia. She's interviewing me. Ju- Julie, excuse me. So, okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Can you close Bye, the Julie. Way? Bye, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. In this day of instant gratification, you can get anything at your fingertips. You can order anything online. People's mind frame has become so short-sighted. You know, and people, you know, the average person is, you know, you know, 60% of the population is overweight and 40% is classified obese. And, you know, we become this new normal of people, you know, and you get, you know, go for tests, blood tests. And, oh, you're in range. Well, I don't want to be in range. I don't want to be normal. I want to be exceptional. I want my clients to be ex- exceptional. 
So again, we've conditioned as a society to just sort of settle for the quick thing, the easy thing. You know, it's hard to think, in my case, 60 years out or even two years out, right? Like, like people can't even think beyond tomorrow or like their next vacation or the end of the year or the weekend. So it's hard to think that long term, but you know, I've made the commitment and not, and that's not for everyone and I'm not judging whatever, but you know, I made that choice because I want to live a long time. I want to see my grandkids and my great grandkids. We had kids late. I want to see my, my grandkids, you know, not just born, but like also grow up, you know, unfortunately in our families, you know, all the grandparents, uh, you know, passed away early. So only one of, uh, of uh, the grandparents got to see our kids born and they died, you know, like when they were babies. So like they didn't get to see them grow up, you know? So I, I just want different for, for my life and, and my family. So uh, now back to the Alzheimer's it kind of ties into that in a way as well. So uh, I do have Alzheimer's in my, in my family. My aunt has it. Uh, I wish I knew some of the things I knew now, you know, 15 years ago when I could at least, you know, maybe make some suggestions uh, you know, to my, 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 my cousins and, and that sort of thing. Um, and I also have done genetic testing. So I have also the Alzheimer's gene, uh, as well, but yeah, you know, that's not a, that's not a death sentence. It's all, it's all epigenetics, it's all lifestyle, whether you're going to trigger that gene or not. So again, back to my, a lot of the things I do is specifically knowing that I have that gene is to make sure that I never activate that gene by, by what I do. I've, I've recently met a fellow uh, who also went through that same sort of struggle with his father, actually, uh, suffering from Alzheimer's and all, and then dementia and all that that's going on. So he beca it, it became a mission for him to sort of find a, a, a cure for, for Alzheimer's. So he started this about six years ago, was put in you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of his own money into it. And he's actually come up with a, what I think is a, a really good protocol uh, for that's not being done right now. It'll be a first so basically, you know, uh, not to dig too much into this, basically if someone's, uh, you know, starting to become forgetful, dementia, that sort of thing, their family takes them, excuse me, to the doctor, it's too late. It's like I said before, this has been building for 12, 15, 20 years before you get to that point where you, you take them to the doctor. They'll give you some pills to manage the stuff. They know it doesn't work. Every, the, everyone knows it doesn't work. There's no cure for Alzheimer's, so, so to speak. There's a couple fellows, uh, Dale Bredesen, I'll drop his name. Uh, who's come up with what's called the Recode Protocol. It's basically a three-step approach. I won't get into it right now. You can look that up. That's, that's all online, uh, which is you know, through some uh, uh, pharma, uh, uh, nutritional therapy, vitamin therapy, et cetera, et cetera. It's shown great improvements. What this fellow that I've recently met has come up with through his foundation, so he started a charitable foundation and all that, is an eight-step protocol. So it takes the Recode, which is, which is you know, has... Uh, studies and, and proof and, and all and clinical studies and all that shown to to benefit and is taking it way further. So basically, they need to prove out this new system, this new theory, and that if you do all these multiple interventions, right, Alzheimer's, uh, you know, speak specifically in this case, but many other major diseases, whether it be cancer, or multi multimodal approaches are needed. It's not just this. It's not just nutrition. It's not just Sleep is super is super big for people with uh, cognitive problems, dementia, etc. You know, it's it's multimodal approach. So basically, he's trying to raise money to do a clinical trial. His background is actually not medicine or anything like that. It's actually sort of the uh, tech, IT side. So they built some uh, AI, a proprietary uh, artificial intelligence. Essentially, the only reason I bring that up is basically they think they can do this clinical tri clinical trial for one tenth the cost of what it would normally take now using machine learning and that sort of thing. So they only need about $700,000 to run this clinical trial. So once I kind of met up and hooked with them, we kind of see, we knew we have this common, um, uh, you know, commonality of uh, Alzheimer's and we just really hit it off well. I said, you know what, hey, you know, I'll, I know some people that maybe don't have deep pocket. I mean, I've contributed myself financially to, the, to, the, to, to try and raise the funds for this clinical trial. But I said, hey, I know people, and they don't have necessarily big deep pockets, but they know people have deep pockets. So let me, inter you know, and we're trying to get the ball rolling. And we had a big meeting yesterday with some people. We're going to have some meetings upcoming with, like, uh, investors. And I'm just helping them, guiding them along, volunteering my time to the organization. Uh, and I might get more involved later on. What that looks like, I don't know at this point. But I really believe in, in it's a multimodal approach. And we need to take, you know, what's working now, again, just talking 
talking specifically about Alzheimer's, but you can put it on a whole bunch of other diseases, is obviously not working. Throwing drugs at it, billions of dollars in drug research, it's not working and it hasn't worked yet. So let's try something different, a multimodal approach, prove it out. Maybe it doesn't work, maybe it doesn't work, but I think it's worth trying to see if we can get it to work. And I, I, I really believe it. So that's something I've mo really recently, like maybe the last two, three months, I've really just at this point just been trying to uh, an organizer, just trying to get him and the foundation in front of people that know people or in front of people that have pockets who can write a check to, to fund the clinical trial. You know, theory being that a lot of these protocols, again, will work for other um, issues as well. But if we can prove it on Alzheimer's, then we can take it to other things. And, 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 his, and his goal, too, is, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a very complicated model, which I won't get into now. But essentially, he wants it, it's all going to be open source. So, so any university doing research in Russia or Japan or wherever, it's like, here's what we've done. Like, make it better. Take it. Because really, he just wants to make it better, you know. Hey, we we can get it 80% of the way, maybe not a cure, but like grassly improve quality of life or life extension. And some researchers in Japan or China take it and add something else or tweak something like, hey, it's even, we've made it even better. Like that's what he wants. So yeah, so I'm really passionate about that. He's super passionate about it. Uh, obviously, he you know fought the battle with his dad and lost his dad to Alzheimer's. Uh, so and you know my aunt is struggling right now. Uh, unfortunately, you know there's members of my family that you know, maybe in 10 or 15 years that they might be in the same boat. So I'm trying to get ahead of it. So that's something I'm really kind of involved in now. Uh, well, you know, one of the thing, one of the places I'm putting my, uh, not that I have a lot of it, but my extra time I'm trying to put into that right now. What is the name of the foundation, Deepak? Yeah, it's called Brain Mechanics. So brainmechanics.org, uh, very comprehensive website. Uh, check it out and you can, uh, you can uh, donate directly on there. Uh, maybe I can send a link. Oh, if people start following me on my social media, I, I every regular, I just throw the link out again to my own personal donation page. Uh, the people can donate via me. It doesn't matter. I don't care if, you know, they, however, we just need to get the money in, in the big pot so we can actually run the clinical trial. Everything's ready to go. The doctors are lined up where the study is going to happen, all that. It's just funding. That's where we're at with that. It's just funding. So brainmechanics.org. You know what? We could always drop a link in the comment section when we post this, you know, sure. on uh, That'd be great. Facebook. That'd be great. Yeah. And, um, and, and now I'd like to plug you, like your business. So you have, you have a business where you have clients and you help people. Yes. So I have uh, yeah, so I'm an, uh, an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I did work in corporate uh, uh, world uh, before. Um, and, you know, and I did start this business as, a, as sort of a side hustle or side gig, if you will. Uh, uh, part-time, you know, evenings and weekends and that sort of thing. Uh, then, you know, with the, with the way the economy is uh, here locally, um, you know, uh, about a little over a year ago, you know, uh, the universe sent me a signal that uh, it was uh, time to go out on my own and then not work for anybody else. So, so yeah, I have a, basically a coaching consulting company, a few different business lines, but the one we're kind of talking about here is, is my health coaching, health and longevity coaching. So yeah, so again, I work with people, uh, you know, I have different package levels and, and different things and what people want, but you know, typically I try and work with people on all those aspects. So the mental the, and, and, uh, and uh, mentality focus, nutrition, uh, strength training, functional uh, movement, and then, you know, all the stress reduction. So in that is sleep and, you know, could be mindfulness and, and breathing techniques, uh, meditation, gratitude, you know, um, uh, light exposure, water exposure, chemical exposure, you know, all the, like a whole, again, whole package, uh, you know, so again, not people think a lot of times weight is the thing that it's easily quantifiable. You can, you can go on a scale, you can see yourself in the mirror. Uh, and yeah, and, and I know plenty of people too, who are, you know, do ultra marathons and that sort of thing. And a lot of them, you know, they're, they're awesome. Fit, fit as a whistle. There's a lot of my know too that chronically get injured, chronic inflammation, Looking at me, you think, man, they are so fit. You know, they got six, seven percent body fat. They're super lean, but they're just they're dying on the inside, right? So it goes always. You can't always tell. So it's you know, people always think, oh, I just want to lose the twenty pounds or the forty pounds or whatever. But it's like, nah, is that really what you want, or do you want to be there for your grandkids or whatever? So I kind of help people identify themselves, and and sometimes people aren't ready for that. That's fine. We're not meant to work together. But, you know, yeah. people who want that, not necessarily to be lived to 100 like me, but they just want a better life. They want a better future for themselves. Maybe it starts with weight, but it's bringing inflammation down, 
uh, you know, again, through the, the struggles I went with my back, I get a lot of referrals from friends or colleagues who's like, Hey, here's someone and they have like a back issue and, you know, and they don't always become clients because they're not ready for the rest of it. They just want like how to help my back. Well, okay, well, here's a couple simple things to like help your yeah. back, you know, nutrition would help too, but not, 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 not everyone's always ready for that. But yeah. you know, the biggest inflammation we get is through nutrition. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm kind of getting off to your, your question. There. I love yeah. it. I love okay, getting off. This is, this is gold. You're dropping so many nuggets. It's, it's so good. You are bringing so much value. I am so grateful for this. Like you are really helping a lot of people. You are a cool cat, Deepak. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. So just, just to round out and my answer to, yeah. So I work with people, uh, you know, sometimes it's packages, sometimes one-on-one, sometimes people just want straight up like personal training. Uh, again, my, my focus is on functional fitness. So you know, 15 minutes a session, maybe once or twice a week tops, high intensity, boom, bang, you're done. Body weight in your home, in your office, you don't have to go to a gym. That's kind of my, my, my minimal, minimal effective dose, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, most people with nutrition, that's kind of my main focus. And then, uh, yeah, and then just a lot of lifestyle strategies and, and that sort of thing. Just getting back to, you know, our, what our ancestors uh, did, you know. You know, so many people now are, you know, yeah, there's so many, so many rabbit holes we can go, we can go down to, and, and maybe we'll have a, uh, another conversation, another time on one specific topic, uh, yes. know, what, it, what it would be. So I, do, uh, I, do I would love that because you are a, like, you have so studying. much information and it's so valuable and it's so, it's like that stuff that you sense is out there, but you don't have access to it. And here it is. It's like, oh, here we go. This is the real deal. Here's some really good, valuable information. That it's like it resonates. It resonates. Sure. It lands. It hits the emotional center. Right. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. And a couple other th quick things I'll mention. I've actually uh, with uh, my old uh, industry association. I guess I'm still a, blog, uh, me a member. I've kept my uh, my credentials my cor uh, for for uh, what I had when I was working in in the corporate. Um, I worked out damn hard to get them. So I'm going to keep those uh, credentials, but uh, with that industry organization, I've actually, uh, I'm going to start teaching a, a course, a half day course on stress management, uh, but not your typical uh, stress management course is going to be sort of more of uh, the hacking stuff, the sleep, the light uh, environment, chemicals, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm bringing this different approach to stress management. And then there's a couple clinics uh, that are locally uh, that where I live. Uh, one that I'm going to start working with them as sort of their functional fitness. Uh, uh, member of their team. Uh, so that's going to start actually week after next, uh, like uh, one day a week, a uh, couple hours a week type of thing for, for new clients when they onboard new clients, just do assessments on their, on their fitness. And then another clinic, uh, which I won't uh, get too far ahead of ourselves. We haven't signed any paperwork yet, but to sort of be their in-house nutrition uh, expert. To, uh, so they're sort of a pain management uh, center. That's all I'll say. But like I said, uh, a lot of inflammation comes from nutrition and they realize that too. So they, they want to bring a nutrition person in uh, as well. So that's, that's kind of the thing. So personal clients all over, uh, you know, Canada and the U S I don't have any international clients yet, but I do have clients in the U S and, and locally in Canada and then a couple of these local clinics uh, as well. So. so if somebody is watching this and they're like, Oh man, I need to contact this man. He is amazing. How do they do it? Sure. So, uh, um, uh, D D Saney health on Twitter or at D Saney health is on Twitter. You can just hit me up on there or fo start following me, what have you. Um, uh, my current, uh, um, um, website is fit body hyphen health.com. So fit body hyphen health.com. I, I think we mentioned earlier doing a bit of a rebranding. Uh, so the new, new rebrand, the new website will be Deepak Saney health.com. Uh, that's not up and running yet. So if you go Google that, you're going to see nothing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Facebook here, uh, Fit Body Health uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, Deepak Saini, just regular up on regular personal uh, um, uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know how many people uh, will uh, be watching this or whatever, but I mean, it is my business phone. I hand out cards and I have it posted in other places. So if you want to just hit me up, text me or call me 403-809-1490. Give me a shout. Right on. Awesome. And as this is going to be on Facebook, I mean, people can message you too. So that'll be yeah, good. Direct message me, whatever. Yeah. yeah text me, yeah. What, what have you. Uh, email me. And if you go to my site, you'll see my email address, uh, Deepak at Fit Body Health or Fit Body hyphen health.com. You know, reach me that way as well. So lot, this lots is of ways awesome. to go. I don't know how much time we have left, but I wanted to make sure I got those things in for sure. <laughs>
Yeah, sure. Yeah, we probably are coming up quickly on time. So I really yeah. appreciate the opportunity for the for the interview. And um, yeah, hopefully maybe we can do it again sometime. I think there's so many. Uh, I think I think I gave a few little. I don't know if they're nuggets, but I kind of hinted at a few different things that I work on with clients or that I'm interested in. You know, like certainly be their own topics. Like you know, I'm I'm not a sleep sleep expert by any means. I know a couple of really good guys who are awesome sleep experts, but I've learned so much from them. We could talk just about sleep and you know. Um, uh, EMF exposure and that's something I'm getting more interested in and trying to minimize that myself and just little tips and tricks and that sort of thing and yeah like so many things so whatever yeah if you're watching this and you have something very specific uh, you want to talk about you know hit me up we can talk about it or we can make it another post uh, another video for, uh, just on that specifically or what have you and what, what not so I'm open I just I just want to I just want to you know I, I feel blessed that while it really sucked going through my back issues, you know, for a better part of two years, uh, well, actually, actually more than that, because it was kind of two years before I even sort of really got into the treatment of doing the PRP. So let's call it three years uh, of just the, sort of the pain of that. You know, I feel like I had to go through that and had to struggle with my weight the whole, you know, for my whole life to come out the other side to really realize what my purpose is. So I just, you know, I'm just here to like serve others uh, now and, you know, whether it be education or working with them one on one or just, you know, just educating you know the masses or at least directing people to you know experts that are uh, that are you know more in that whatever their topic is more than me right? so deepak i appreciate you thank you so much for this interview and you have you have dropped major massive value major nuggets it's people anybody that's uh, fortunate enough to have, have you touch their life even if they're not ready for it they're lucky they're fortunate so I want to thank you so that. much and I would be honored if we did this again because my mind is blown. I'm like, I just want to, I could just like listen to a Deepak seminar like all day. Just like plug me in, get the water, get like all the right snacks and like, and I'm listening. <laughs> you're, you're amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I'll, I'll give a little teaser. It's probably a couple years away, but I actually would like to do sort of like a master class that's really on strictly on longevity. Uh, you know, so a lot of the awesome. things to start with, you know, for your health for the short term. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not that much to tweak it, add a few extra you know, hacks, if you will, for really longevity. So that's something I'm looking at doing, you know, maybe a couple of years down there's sort of a master class or a web series or something that's really targeted on sort of hacking uh, longevity. So, but that, I mean, that's another topic I'm getting, you know, that's a little hint for the future maybe. So anyway, I really cool. appreciate your time as well. And, uh, and then thank you for, uh, for the, doing this. It was, it was a blast. It was, I, I had fun. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess like we'll wrap it up. And uh, thank you so much. And, and please have the last word. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, I, I would appeal to the, to the masses is if there's whatever it may be, whether it's your weight or, you know, confidence or your sleep or you have anxiety or whatever it is, there is something there for you. You just have to look up, search for the help. Um, you know, you, you, you can do it on your own, really. For most things, there's a lot of research. If you don't know where to look or, or what have you, you know, talk to myself or, or someone else in your community, you know, a doctor or, or whatever. But whatever you're, is troubling you, there is something that can help you. Maybe not cure you necessarily, but can definitely help you get you in a better path. Um, and, and a lot of that starts with very simple things, nutrition being, you know, probably the biggest for many things. So and sleep so many you know uh, anxiety and and sort of things can so many things can be just solved with sleep sleep and nutrition are probably the two really easy things so anyway all I, my employee like all of you whatever you may be struggling with and if you're not that is awesome but if you are just look for help just look for help thank you awesome thank you deepak all right have a good night you too bye bye